shareable. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try live on Facebook. And we'll put it on our timeline. This is my first time doing a Facebook Live. Wow, I know. I'm. I, you never know. I could go viral, Donovan. You could <laughs> get a whole get more applicants than ever before. <laughs> okay, live producer. I don't even know what these mean, but I'll try it. <laughs> Okay, and I'll hit play. Okay, good afternoon, Haskell. Hopefully we are showing. I think my um, sound's a little bit delayed, but hopefully we are showing on our Facebook Live. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the title here because some might be logging on and not know what we're doing. So for now, I'll just put biomedical sciences presentation. Okay, and I'll make it. Oh, I haven't hit go live yet. Good. <laughs> okay. All right. In three, two, one. Looks like it's another three, two, one because it says setting up your meeting. Okay. Water. <laughs> okay. All right. It says it's now streaming live. So hello, Haskell Indian Nations University. For those of you tuning in, we are doing our very first Facebook Live with one of our guest, um, I guess a guest program here to give you an opportunity. This will be of special interest to natural science and environmental science students. So feel welcome to hop on our Zoom. We did post it earlier um, this week. And if you're an environmental science or natural sciences major, you have the Zoom info in your email inbox in your Haskell email. Um, feel welcome to watch from Facebook or log into the Zoom. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our guests now. And I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. So can they see me? Okay, I can't hear you anymore, but you can hear me. Is that okay? Okay, so my name is Dr. Garrow, and I'm a faculty member at Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine. And I thank you for inviting me to give a short presentation on our master's degree program. Uh, I'm going to now share my screen to see if I can show you some slides. And as I go through the slide presentation, uh, I don't know if I will hear anybody's voices, but uh, that might be important or there's some kind of chat I'll find out with my spouse. I'm not familiar with Zoom, but we'll see if things pop up or if I can hear questions. Um, so hold on a second. Looks like sharing my screen is going to be pretty simple. Can you see that? Give me a thumbs up, Laura. Okay, perfect. Okay, so again, my name's Tim Garrow, and I'm relatively new to Kalamazoo, Michigan. I came from originally from California. Orange soda. How large was that? Orange soda. Oh, he's ordering breakfast. All right. Um, <laughs> so I originally from California. I went to the University of California, Davis, got a bachelor's and master's in nutrition science. And then I went to Berkeley and got a PhD in biochemistry. I became a professor at the University of Illinois in the Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition. And I was there for 23 years. I've always had a passion for human biology and had the opportunity to join Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine. Um, and today I'm going to share with you a master's degree program that we started a few years ago. And uh, when we had an individual leave, I became the director. So quickly an overview. One of the most important features that I want you to know is that this program is designed to support our mission to build a diverse and inclusive environment that serves the medical needs of Southern Michigan. And so obviously we're hoping people who graduate uh, 
from our school of medicine will enjoy the community and after spending four years there, maybe want to stay and, and be a physician after they do finish their training. Um, this program is designed for people who apply to our medical school. So you do not apply directly to this program. We screen people who've applied to this school and they, we're typically looking for individuals that uh, may not have the uh, required scores or strengths in their pre-medical experiences that we're looking for, but we think there's a lot of promise. And then we will invite you to join this master's degree program. It's a rigorous program. I mean, it is basically a five-year medical school program if everything operates the way we envision it. It's nine months. It starts in August and goes through the first week of May. And your students are required to prepare a literature-based thesis. So it's a very compressed program, one-year master's degree. In fact, I tell students, it's a lot like a professional science master's degree. I don't know if people are familiar with those, but we're specifically getting you through a program because we want you to join our medical school. And so that's the whole goal for us. Uh, you don't have to, but if you're successful, you'll be invited to do so. So that's the point. If you are accepted into our master's degree program, that comes with a conditional acceptance to our medical school the following year. That of course assumes you uh, make it through the curriculum fine and, and achieve all the goals in a timely manner. So a lot of the coursework that we do, especially the first semester from August through the end of December, it runs alongside the medical school program. And so much of the teaching and learning events a student uh, goes through when they're in our master's degree program, you're actually sitting side by side to the medical students. Obviously in the COVID year, we're not sitting side by side by anybody right now, but uh, you get the point. The program is running uh, in tandem with the medical school program. And please interrupt me if anybody has any questions. So again, the application process, there's no direct application. So we're gonna, we go through all of our medical school applications. We find individuals that, you know, didn't quite meet scores for acceptance and yet they're underrepresented in medicine and that's what we're targeting this program, for this program. But you're basically accepted because you have to meet the same standards. And so you have to have an AMCAS application you need an MCAT score within the last three years. You need a GPA that's above three. And you have to have completed a bachelor's degree before you can start this master's degree program. And our final student selection ends up around May or June. It can spill into July. It just depends on how many we can find to, to join this, this program. But a very uh, nice part of this program is that anybody who gets accepted gets a full ride scholarship for tuition. So it covers all the tuition. You'll have to pay for your own housing and of course, every other incidental you need, but the actual tuition is waived in a form of a scholarship to that student. Typically we have we started out very conservative. I think this is the fifth class we now have starting this last uh, August. The first two years, we only recruited two students each year. And then years three and four, we recruited eight students each year. And now we're doing our fifth year and we've only been able to recruit three. And I think that had a lot to do with the coronavirus outbreak and and people rethinking what are going to be their next steps. But I'm assuming next year we'll be accepting somewhere between six and 10 candidates into this program. So what's the path to medical school? We view this really as like a five-year medical school program because most individuals are successful and then they matriculate into our medical school. But in order to do that, you must meet satisfactory academic progress. 
So I'm going to go through the curriculum a little bit later, but every course we give, you take a final in. It's called a summative exam, and we have a minimum passing score of 70%. It's a pass-fail system. And so if you get 70%, yippee, you, you move on, you pass that course. If you don't pass the course on the first attempt, you get a second attempt. And even if you didn't pass the second time, you get a third attempt. And without going into the policies in the handbook, the bottom line is, is I think the curriculum has 11 courses in it. Uh, you can only have so many remediation attempts, meaning you can only retake these final exams so many times, and then you can actually be dismissed from the program if you fail too many courses on the first attempt. That's highly uncommon for that to happen, but theoretically it can, and it has on occasion in the past. If that happens, then you, you will not enter the, the medical school program. You also have to complete the program in a nine month academic year. So when the, when the year's over, if you didn't successfully complete all the courses, you won't be given acceptance into the medical school, but you still be allowed to finish the program and get your master's degree. But we have the requirement that you have to meet all of the obligations of the program within the nine month period. We have professionalism requirements and that's never really been an issue, but in case there's been some unprofessional behavior, we also, via the handbook, you know, we have ways of making sure students uh, meet the professional standards for becoming a physician. A highly unlikely way not to be successful in, in this curriculum. When it comes time at the end of the master's degree, we will, we, ex we require you to have taken the MCAT to get in. And most individuals have met our minimal MCAT score for our medical school program, which happens to be 497. Um, if by chance we let an individual into our program who has a score on their MCAT less than that, we will pay for you to take the MCAT again during your master's degree year. And we're expecting you to get a higher score and we actually also pay for a Kaplan course for those students to to augment this you know uh, retaking the exam. We've kind of moved away from this a little bit though we're really selecting candidates that are typically above that 497 mark because we have found that the program is so rigorous that it's very difficult for students to also take a Kaplan course and also study for the MCAT on top of meeting all the requirements to complete the degree. And so theoretically it's possible, but it just depends on year to year whether we're gonna recruit someone with a score less than 497. At the end of the program, you are required to resubmit an AMCAS application and complete all the pre-matriculation requirements to start the MD program. So any questions on that so far? So I'm just curious, how much would tuition be if it weren't a full ride? I think tuition, you know, the way it was created, I'm not even sure if they came up with the value. I've heard the number of about 30 to 35,000. The medical school, I think, is significantly more than that, but that was the number that we valued this program. We've never charged tuition. Uh, the medical school faculty teach the courses and, uh, some of the courses run alongside the MD pro program, and so it's not that big of an issue. And as I go through it, the ones in the second term, which I think you could probably see my cursor. Yes. Over here, these are specific to the master's degree program, these four blocks. Okay. Uh, these blocks here, you run uh, alongside the medical school program. Okay, excellent. So if they get accepted to this program, um, after having applied to the med school, but not quite made it, they're getting an education that's valued pretty much over the price of a standard car. So that's really, yeah, I think that's something to, really cool to consider. Exactly. And that's why it's been, I mean, we've been, had great success and most students who've gone through it have been very happy because one, you also learn whether you really do want to go to medical school. A lot of people think they want to go, dream about going. There's certainly the need for individuals you know to get better representation in 
medical school of diverse individuals, but you may learn that this isn't for you. So that's what I like about it in, in one sense. You're not accruing a bunch of debt. Yes. And you come out with a master's. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, now I'm going to run through the curriculum a little bit. So it's, it's, we run a series of short courses and a couple of them run, run longitudinally. So this little darker brown box is a course. These light yellow boxes are courses. And then we do have a couple of longitudinal courses that run all year long as shown down here at the bottom. But I will go through each of the courses individually now and give you a little bit about uh, what these courses are about. So you start off, we want you on campus, typically the last week of July. And we have a course that we call Transitions. And this is a course that simply gets you orientated to Kalamazoo and our School of Medicine. You know, what software do we use? Uh, where do you find out about financial aid? You know, just everything you need to do to be successful and get comfortable in, the, in your new environment. For the most part, it's fun. You meet all the new students, of course, as well as the medical students. And um, although we do start a little, we do have a couple of learning events that are a part of this first course down here in, in gray here, or maybe it's light purple, this MedU6731. For the most part, it's just informational. Then your first course, oh, I guess I'll follow my slides, that would be better. <laughs> Notice the green sections. So after, typically after each course, now one course gets interrupted because of the traditional Thanksgiving break. But after each course, we give a week vacation period. We call them green weeks. And uh, that's nice because you get to decompress. The only caveat I put here is plan travel carefully because if someone doesn't get a 70% on their summative exam, then they have to take a second exam, what we call a remediation. And we typically require that to be a week after the initial exam. And so it's a little bit of a bummer, but if you were to not make the 70% mark right here, we would expect you to probably take that exam here after a couple days into the second course. And the rationale for that is, is you have no courses here, so you have a lot of time to study, and you will have met with the course director, and you know where your strengths and weaknesses are. And then you can take the second attempt at the exam before you start getting a bunch of new material for the following course. It's not common for people to require remediation, but on the other hand, it's not uncommon. So it happens. There's no stigma associated with it. Medical students also need to remediate these courses as well as occasionally a master's degree student. So there's no rhyme or reason. It depends on the strengths that an individual comes in with. So the green weeks are nice breaks. The one caveat here is this first course, which runs alongside the medical school, is five weeks for the medical students, but six weeks for the master's degree students. And the reason is, is they actually have a third week of transitions before they get their green week, or maybe it's after their green week. But the bottom line is the master's degree students, when they arrive, they take the same course as the medical students here, but then the course ends and the medical students take their exam here and you take it a week later after having no course material. So you really get extra time to study for that first big exam, which is nice. Uh, all the students have always made it through the first course since I've been the director. Then we have what we call four basic science courses. So this is cellular biochemistry. It's very heavy in energy metabolism. We have molecular genetics, and then we have principles of immunology, and then we have a cell growth and development. And these four courses, actually I lied a little bit because all four of these courses, you sit in tandem with the medical students. The only one that's significantly different is actually this fourth course where there's a lot of clinical information that begins to be delivered and the master's degree students do not go to those clinically oriented events, learning events. So their course 
is three credit hours instead of four. Then we have a, oops, so that's the four basic science courses that run alongside the MD courses. Then we have two laboratory style courses. One is we have a very unique and rigorous normal and forensic anatomy course specifically for our master's degree students. And then we have a histology and cell biology course at the end. And they're laboratory style because a lot of it is virtual, but you're looking at digital slides, et cetera, or specimen samples. It's very much like looking through a microscope, except we can see things on our computer screens now instead. Any questions so far from right here? I have a question. Yes. So on there, it says 2020 and 2021. This is referring to 2021, correct? Yes, so right now this is this year's program and right now the students are about right here, correct? Yeah. So, but next year we've already approved the calendar. It's already up on our website and next year it's going to be the same as far as we know. We're talking about maybe changing this course, but this is probably the way it will be next year as well. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome and thank you for the question. Then we have this course called Advances in Perspectives in Medicine and this one's a real breeze. We simply require master's degree students to go to some seminars. And the fact that you attended a seminar, you get credit for that and we ask you to write a half page reflection on what you learned or picked up from seeing a, an outside guest present some topic on biomedical sciences. So most people have no issues with this and it's typically a fun outing for uh, all the students because the medical students go to these as well. And then finally, we have this capstone course and you can see this also runs longitudinally. So it's an all year event. And this is the course where you learn to find a topic that you're interested in writing a literature-based thesis on, and you're guided through how to prepare this document in terms of how do you find references, how do you limit the scope or expand the scope if necessary, and how do you go about you know, preparing an outline and then literally learning how to flush out a small uh, literature-based thesis. We have an excellent faculty member who's an expert in scientific writing, her name is Dr. Laura Baller, and she's had great success uh, training students how to work on this project independently. It does take a lot of your own initiative to get it done though, so it's not like a typical class where you, know, you have all these lectures you have to listen to and, and then you have to pass an exam. There's, there's no exam. You have to, you'll have a committee at the end and they will be reviewing your thesis and, and giving you a thumbs up or thumbs down and it needs some modification or this and that. Again, we've had great success. You get a lot of guidance as you go through writing this process and you interact with a committee early on all the way up around here. They start looking at your early drafts of your thesis and they give you feedback that you modify the draft on and that goes through several rounds of revision until you submit usually a final document that just passes because you become really proficient at doing this. Let me see. And that's, that's really it. This, the rest is something I just put up there as a, you know, for you to be aware as an educational institution, you can always find consumer information or things about our campus safety and security on our website, but I won't click on those. And so at this point, I can go back or unshare my screen and we can figure out we can take questions live. Let me check if there are any questions on the Facebook Live. Okay, it doesn't appear there are. Well, one important thing is 
feel free to reach out to me. I don't know if my uh, email address was on that slide, any of the slides, uh, but it's simply timothy.garrow at med.wmish.edu. I mean, if you just look up Homer Stryker MD School of Medicine in the upper right-hand portion of the website, you'll see uh, education link and you click on that and you'll find the master's degree of biomedical sciences and at the bottom of that page you'll find my contact information and you can call me you can email me we can zoom we can microsoft teams uh, i can answer any question you might have down the road Hey, I see some chat here now. Donovan, are you there? Do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I do. Uh, actually, I'm just uh, back in my office, so give me. So I'm really excited to be able to uh, partner with uh, Costco Indian. Indian Nation University. Um, I'm really excited to be uh, providing opportunities uh, to help, uh, you know, students uh, become more of a competitive applicant to uh, medical school. We're going to be doing a series like this throughout, you know, the year where I'm going to bring in uh, next, next month, I'm going to uh, bring in our mission uh, people to uh, do a presentation on the admission process to uh, medical school, and then I want, then I will bring in um, uh, opportunities that you can take advantage of of uh, different pipeline programs that are uh, pathway programs that are provided from various uh, university, everywhere from our national organization, uh, the AAMC, um, also to uh, UCLA, USC. So um, this is just uh, the first introduction, and then when things open up. Uh, Dr. Garrows and I will, uh, and um, my coordinator, uh, Candice, will come out there and um, do a more uh, formative presentation in person. So this is just, uh, like I say, an introduction uh, about this great uh, master's program that we have available that we really want to um, present to you guys. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity, and if you are selected to be a part of this opportunity, it's a... <clears throat> A gateway into you know medical school and like I said we really wanted to uh, reach out and really uh, provide you guys with uh, this this not only this um, this program but any other uh, opportunities that we want to uh, that we can help you with with your uh, journey to becoming a, a healthcare professional yeah and so it's it's been fantastic since dr. Roy joined our school because we really did not have a person for diversity and inclusion and we were just kind of blindly going through this process and finding students. I, I was just adding up, I think we've had 20 students now go through the master's degree program and let me see, 12, uh, 14 of them uh, decided to enter our medical school program. And what's really nice about it is one, you figure out this is gonna be nice but also, do I like the area? Do I really want to be in medicine? And then you start the program year one and you see obviously there's been some overlap. So it gives you a little breathing room on your first term because, okay, I've seen these courses before or much of the material. There's a few additional events, but I've seen a lot of it. So I feel really confident. And then you can, the medical students are doing things in the afternoon and evening, you know, gaining clinical skills right off the get go. And, um, so then you feel like, okay, I'm ready for this. This is, um, you've made it through what's called the imposter syndrome and you know that you're gonna be successful and we've had great success in it so far. We have six students currently that are M2s and six students that are currently M1s. And anybody out there listening, you know, we can hook you up with some of these students as well. And you can chat with them and just, you know, hey, what's it like, right? I was talking to this old bald guy and he says it's pretty neat, but you know, is it really, is it really fun? I mean, how do you like it? How hard is it? How much time do you really have to spend? I mean, that's the most important thing to get an appreciation of because I purposefully wrote down rigorous. 
it's challenging. It's and challenging. everybody, we, when we bring someone in, we're assuming we've picked you for a very specific reason. And we, in our mind, you have what it takes to be successful. So it's just, just doing it at that point. But awesome. you definitely, it takes, uh, takes persistence and someone, you know, just stick to itiveness at a really high level. And also, too, living someone who just uh, recently moved here in April from Los Angeles, I've been very pleasantly surprised at what uh, Kalamazoo and uh, West Michigan has to offer. There's a lot of opportunities uh, from the standpoint of a lot of uh, organizations that are really, um, really geared towards helping uh, improve, you know, underserved communities. There's a lot of, you wouldn't believe how many uh, how many nonprofits and uh, philanthropy uh, groups that are here to, you know, um, in, uh, uh, narrow the uh, the uh, prosperity gap between the haves and have nots. So that's been a pleasant surprise. Any of the uh, fortune, any of the big chain restaurants you can find here in uh, Kalamazoo, uh, that we actually have beaches here. I didn't even know you had beaches in the state of Michigan. Uh, I think Earls and I are both for California boys, and uh, you know it's really uh, <clears throat> it's been a pleasant surprise to see that anywhere in the state of Michigan, you're only ten minutes away from a body of water. And I know being yeah. in a land like Can like Kansas, you know, it'd be good to get into somewhere where you can uh, take advantage of you know during the summer months, go to the beach. It's true. The the recreation opportunities are incredible in Michigan. Right. Um, this is a really outdoorsy type of state uh serious winters if you but uh you get true four distinct seasons here it's just incredible that's the most amazing thing and it's has beautiful forests and um hiking trails people do everything from kayaking to stand up paddlers even people that surf on the great lakes and i grew up surfing but i i haven't gone surfing on the great lakes the, the, what they say here is four out of five Great Lakes prefer Michigan. And in <laughs> fact, there's more, because we have four of them touching our state, yeah. there's more coastline in Michigan than there is in California. That's so, wild. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't th realize yeah, that. It's yeah. just surrounded by these massive lakes that look like oceans when you're on their shores. Right. And like I said, there's a lot of diversity uh, when people really think about diversity in the state, state of Michigan, you really think about Detroit, Flint, Grand Valley. But I've been pleasantly surprised at the diversity that is here in Kalamazoo. So I really, like I say, if you really want to go um, to a city uh, where you can, you know, you're two hours away from Chicago and then another uh, two hours away from Detroit. So you really can go, um, you really have the opportunity to, you know, spend a day or a weekend in one of those two big metropolis, but then come back and, you know, um, study here, um, uh, do your training, and then hopefully be a physician and also to uh, be a re uh, attendant here too and a resident. I think one of the uh, unique things that Kalamazoo offers is the Kalamazoo Promise. You know, and the Kalamazoo Promise is that if any uh, st uh student graduate from the state, uh, from Kalamazoo, um, one of the Kalamazoo high schools, they get a uh, free tuition to any school, private or public school in the state of Michigan. So Kalamazoo is, is definitely somewhere where I can honestly say that is really a unique place uh, for the size and how much support you will receive, even the uh, job opportunities. So if you have a spouse, you know, who's gonna be coming here with you, you know, you're going to be going to medical school. They will be able to find a job at some at some of the bigger. Uh, we have a home striker here, a medical device company. You can find a job here. We have a, we have a, what else? We have a pharmaceutical uh, companies here. Uh, you know, where you're talking about uh, veterinary. So, like I say, there is, and then we have uh, Kellogg's in Battle Creek, which is only, um, you know, 20 minutes away from us. You know, so like the surrounding county, then Grand Rapids is another 30 uh, minutes away, which Grand Rapids is about 300,000 in population. So it has everything that you would want. So you can take a day trip there and come back and you can be back to study in the afternoon. So if you really want to, you know, a place where you really want to have that big city vibe, 
you know, in a small town and with a, in a small package, Kalamazoo is definitely the place that I would encourage you. We have a lot of different festivals here. Uh, we have an art museum. I mean, it's hard. You'd be hard pressed to find something that you cannot find in Kansas City that you can accept a barbecue. Kansas City do have way much. Uh, we got some good barbecue here in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Kalamazoo, but it can't compare to uh, Kansas <laughs> City. Cause I, barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I lived in Manhattan, Kansas before, so for a couple of years. So I'm familiar with the, uh, with the Kansas and Missouri area. And I really feel like, you know, this is a really uh, comparable place that, you know, if you're from Kansas and you really want to make that transition, uh, Kalamazoo will uh, be a great place to uh, come and uh, do your, uh, be a, come here to medical school, resident and be a physician. So. Oh my goodness. And, and uh, also too, I would like to introduce. Sorry, my, no problem. I would like to uh, introduce uh, Candace Moore. She's a, uh, she also going to be uh, supporting um, you guys. She's she's the coordinator, and she's the one to put together that uh, wonderful flyer and put all this together. So uh, Candice is, is a is a is an can tell you a little bit more about you know what makes Kalamazoo unique, what makes WMed you know a place to uh, come as uh, to to train uh, as a training physician, resident, and physician. Okay. Um, so yes, I've been here uh, in Kalamazoo. I've moved here from the Detroit area and I started off at Western Michigan University, a four-year uh, credited school, of course, here in um, Kalamazoo. And and I, I really love, you know, Kalamazoo. I um, am raising a family here. Um, I would say it definitely is a family-oriented community. There's so many different um, community partners, churches, um, you know, things to do, activities um, that are happening that actually invites and in very inclusive to families. Um, there's also, you know, of course, things to do for, um, you know, young adults as well, um, people who are single, ready to mingle. <laughs> there's a few, <laughs> few things that are happening here too in Kalamazoo. And um, I, yeah, I, I I'm here for a reason, you know, again, I'm from the Detroit area where it's a bigger city um, and it's only two hours away from Detroit and also two hours away from Chicago, um, which there too is a lot of happenings um, that take place there. So my, my family, we get out quite a bit and we do travel. And even as a, um, a single um, young adult, 20, almost 20 years ago, um, you know, I did build community. I did build relationships with um, people who are still my long-term friends. So, so yeah, I would definitely, um, you know, suggest, you know, getting with me. I'm here to support. I'm here to add, answer any questions that you may have about, you know, our community and just getting acclimated. Um, and, you know, any, any, any comments or, you know, anything that you are looking for, I, I bet I am the person, you know, I can answer the question for you. So thank you so much. And I am um, the Health Careers Pathways and Diversity Program Coordinator. So at WMED, so, you know, I am definitely reachable as well. Um, my email is Candace, C-A-N-D-A-C-E dot more. M O O R E at M E D dot W M I C H dot E D U. And, um, you know, again, you can look up the same thing Dr. Garrow mentioned. You can also look me up um, on our main website as well. And I am here to support you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Candace. Thank you, Candace. Uh, any questions out here for us? For Candace, Dr. Garrow, or myself? Yeah, I have a question. Um, my question is about uh, your path with surgeons, students who want to be surgeons, so, uh, like myself. You know, I don't, you know, I, I got to confess, I don't know how many of our graduates, for example, go into the surgery option, but um, they do. I know that. So I know a lot of people get accepted into surgical residency. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a discipline that graduates leave our medical school program that, you know, are not represented. So yeah. they go on to family medicine, they go on to internal medicine, they go on to pediatrics, 
every discipline you can imagine. People discover what they want to do when they're here. Our medical school curriculum, I guess I could explain that a little bit. We have primarily three types of learning events, but there are other kinds. We give formal lectures, which you would expect, but in addition, we also create what we call independent learning modules, where, for example, someone like me who has some expertise in biochemistry, I may feel I don't need to present this as a lecture. I will instead write a very short, what is essentially like a little mini book chapter. And, and it's, we think if a student reads that and studies the material, they can get it on their own. So that's another way. But every Friday, now this is not in the, in the master's degree program, but in the medical school, we have team-based learning events. And this is what got me into this topic because our team-based learning events are, have a clinical focus. And so during our biomedical sciences period, I'm teaching you about energy metabolism and glycolysis and gluconeogenesis and fatty acid oxidation and fatty acid synthesis and lipoproteins and all that kind of stuff. On Friday, we come in and we present cases about, okay, a patient shows up and they have these symptoms, uh, and you learn this about their family history, uh, what test do you want to give? And we basically walk through a clinical scenario, and, you know, and the, the point I wanted to make is there are physicians in the room during that process. So usually we are presenting this material side by side next to one or two clinically oriented people, either an MD or a pharmacologist or somebody else who has a tremendous amount of clinical experience and judgment. Um, so that, that's, that I think is a really good part of it. Students like team-based learning events. It's a little bit more difficult to do those virtually. We're sometimes struggling with that, but we're doing okay. But typically next year, if everything's right, we'll be back in the classroom and, and doing these team-based learning events the way they're designed to be done. Yeah, and I know from a personal, uh, talking to our chairs of our uh, surgery and ortho department, that they really want to um, encourage more women, especially at the um, in the resident and at the um, attendant uh, physician. Um, so we really are trying to uh, provide more opportunities, and also too, if you're really interested in uh, surgery, I can connect you with uh, one of my former colleagues. I used to work at uh, the Keck School of Medicine. Um, she's a, a surgeon. And she'll be somebody that I can definitely connect you with that can give you some uh, insight on, you know, what you could be doing right now to, uh, you know, um, be more about the, uh, get you in a, about the worth like balance of being a surgeon. And if you try and you choose to have a family, how, what that looks like. So, and I can also too set up a, uh, a, um, a panel of, of, of surgeons if you guys are really interested in uh, coming in and facilitating at one of our sessions that we're gonna be doing once a month to give you guys more information about the life of a surgeon. Yes, absolutely. Because right now I'm just watching YouTube videos from surgeons' perspectives and the day in the life of a surgeon. So um, I will definitely uh, give my email address is uh, Donovan, D-O-N-O-V-A-N dot Roy, R-O-Y at M-E-D dot W-M-I-C-H dot E-D-U. Donovan.roy at mad.wmitch.edu. So if you, uh, if you reach out to me, I will get you connected with uh, one of my former colleagues, Dr. Winfield at the Keck School of Medicine. She'd be more than happy to um, give you some more information about being a surgeon. And also, too, I would get you in contact with our surgery department, too, here as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Yes. And this is what this, these sessions are for. You know, this is, these sessions are, are here to support you guys and answer those questions that may have, you know, been, you know, eluded you. But this is an opportunity to get those questions answered and utilize this platform to be able to, you know, become a more competitive applicant. We really like, uh, Dr. Girls and I really will hope we get a lot of students uh, here to applying to the master's program, you know. He, and, you know, this is why he, he's investing his time today because he's really, you know, passionate, passionate about, you know, providing opportunity for underserved uh, students, you know, to um, go on and go into medical school. So, you know, we're really here to support you and even offline, uh, 
please reach out to us if you're on Facebook Live and you can you run across this um, you know this um, recording and you want some additional information, please reach out to us. Anybody on here about anything because if we don't know it, we will find somebody that will be able to direct you in the right direction. So we're really excited to be, like I said, continues to work with you guys. Uh, Ms. Ms. Rice has been uh, a great collaborator. We're going to do more things. We, ha uh, we also would like to invite you to our, uh, our Native American Heritage Month, where we're going to be uh, doing uh, a lot, uh, talking about uh, uh, what life like as a medical student from the Native American perspective is going to be one of the um, sessions we're going to be doing. We also, too, going to be doing some things about uh, health disparities and how we impact uh, West Michigan, West Michigan, but all, and uh, and also to uh, things pertaining to uh, you know um, uh, trauma from the experience of Native Americans. So please, uh, I will send that information uh, to Ms. Rice, and uh, we hopefully that you guys and your faculty members, and we would love to have you guys. Uh, it's going to be virtual. It doesn't cost you anything. So we just want to make sure that we're you know being supportive of uh, of Haskell. So. I, I don't know um, much about the tribal communities around here, to be honest with you, but we do have a Native American who's an M2 now that went through our master's degree program, and she's uh, from the Chippewa tribe in the uh, Sault Ste. Marie area of Michigan, and that might be an, a good contact for anybody listening to this. Yeah, and maybe we can just can set up a panel, you know, with a couple of students, you know, um, Native American students. I think Sam would, I mean, I could come up with three or four students that would probably really enjoy doing that, assuming it might have to happen during one of their green weeks. Weeks, right. So yes. we, we, should, we would definitely try to coordinate that for you guys. Like I said, this is a platform that we really want to give, make an informal decision and give you all the support you need in order to reach your goal. Yeah, because I originally wanted to be a pediatric dentist, but then I discovered orthopedic surgery and just fell down that path instead. Well, you also too can do, you can go max, be a uh, max, it's called maxrofacial, where you go to dentist, dentistry school for four years, and then you do two years as in, uh, in uh, at a medical school. So you, and you can specialize in pediatrics. Not to say that I want to steer you away from that dream. But that's why I want to get you in contact with Dr. Uh, Winfield because that's what she did. So, okay. I'm yeah, because there's so much you guys. stuff. I have um, a, a two o'clock meeting I got to prepare okay. for a little bit. All right. So if okay. you don't have any more questions specifically for me, again, feel free to contact me. And uh, I'm, in fact, now going to shift over and I'll be meeting our MD applicants online using Zoom. And every, they go through a pretty extensive process and this is the end of the road. They've gotten to the final interview with a goofball like me, right? <laughs> We're just gonna talk about what Kalamazoo's like. Uh, they're basically already, we know they, they'll be accepted. And so we're just gonna chat with them and tell them a little bit more about um, the program here and any interest they might have. But thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you and again, reach out to me if you have any additional questions. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for coming and sharing your time and information. I truly appreciate it on behalf of our students. I know that um, a few of them are interested in medicine, so this is a Fantastic. great opportunity for them. And I'll visit anytime, so we can do this again if there's additional questions or a desire to do that. Okay, awesome. Okay, bye-bye. All right, bye for now. Bye. Like I say, we can, uh, if there's any more questions, but like I say, Jamie, I would definitely uh, get you, just shoot me an email and I would definitely get you in contact with Dr. Winfield and I would definitely set up a, uh, a panel of opportunities of different physicians and from different specialties to come out and present to you guys and from different medical schools too. The purpose of this is, you know, I really would love to see you guys come to, to our uh, medical school but my goal is to make sure that you guys may get the opportunity to go to not only medical school, but get it paid for. And, you, and hopefully if we don't get you here as a, uh, you know, as an undergraduate medical student, we definitely will continue to recruit you maybe as a resident. If we don't get you a resident, then we'd like to get you as a physician. 
So this is just our first introduction. And like I said, let us know some topics or whatever you guys want to want me to and Candace and I to put together. And like I say, we want you to drive the bus. You know, you, we, want to, we want to know what you guys want and how we can better support you guys moving forward. I uh, need you to clarify your email. I, re I got Donovan.Roy. Mitch. At, no, M-E-D, at M-E-D dot W Mitch dot E-D-U. So Donovan dot Roy at Mad dot W Mitch. And, and uh, Ms. Rice has my contact information too, so you can always reach out to her and ask her uh, for my contact information. So. Yep, for sure. You know how to get a hold of me, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. This was this was a learning experience for me too. Not only did I learn more about how to apply to medical school, but also learned how to do a Facebook Live. So yeah, and, <laughs> through Zoom. And Candice put her email in the chat and she put mods too. So you guys oh, look okay. at the chat. You can thank get, you. get our email contact. So thank you very much, Candice, for doing that. All right. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to hit stop on the recording. So let's okay. see what that does. <laughs> <laughs>